So chapter seven is all about data analysis and displays. And in 7.3, we're going to talk about the different shapes of distributions. Um, so at the top of the page, you'll notice that there are three pictures drawn. So if you're writing these notes on your own paper, um, take a minute to draw as best you can these three pictures, okay? Um, and then underneath it, there's this little chart. We're going to fill in this chart um, with the name of this and then uh, some information about it, okay? So you'll notice we have three different graphs drawn. This one, uh, on the end, it has the, the point to this side, and it's the tail. The tail's the longer part here, going down, and then it goes up, and it goes straight down. Here, it's even, okay? And then on this side, the tail's on the other side. So if the tail is on the left, that type of graph is going to be skewed left. So that graph skewed left. In a graph that's skewed left, the tail extends to the left. So we're going to make bullet points here. Tail on the left. Um, and what that means is that most of the data is actually on the right side of the graph. If we were to think about this being the middle of the graph, my bigger bars are on the right side. The bigger bars contain more data. So if it's skewed left, most of the data is actually on the right. Does that make sense? So we have to just be careful. It's skewed left, most of the data is gonna be on the right. In the middle, we have a graph that's symmetric. That word should seem familiar. We've talked about it. We talked about it most recently with box and whisker plots. Symmetric means it's mirrored. It has a mirror image on the left and the right. It's basically the same on the left and the right. All right, mirror image on left and right. Um, and then our third option, you might be able to guess, is called skewed right. And if something is skewed right, that means the tail is on the right. But similar to when we had skewed left, that means most of the data now is actually going to be on the left. The higher um, boxes, I should say, are on or the, the higher bars. There we go. The higher bars are on the right side of the graph, which means most of the data, most data on the left. I might have said that wrong. Um, the higher boxes are on the left side, so most of the data is on the left. Um, one last thing I want to talk about. I've got a little room here, so I'm going to write it over here. Um, find some room on your page. I want you to write this. What the shape of these graphs is called, it's called a bell-shaped curve. If you ever take a statistics class, you're going to hear that a lot. A bell-shaped curve is what we're looking at here. And we know some things about a bell-shaped curve. So I want you to just go ahead and draw that bell-shaped curve. Okay, The reason it's called a bell-shaped curve is because it, it kind of looks like a bell. What we know about a bell-shaped curve is right down the middle, I want you to put a line. The line right down the middle is going to represent our mean, x bar. Okay. Then we're going to continue to draw a couple lines evenly as I go. So let's draw a line evenly over here and here, or maybe one more here and here. Okay. We're going to call this one standard deviation from the mean, and this is negative one standard deviation. This will be two standard deviations. This will be negative two standard deviations. And then what I want to talk about, and we're going to use this information as we get into our later examples in this section, is that this represents 68% of our data, and this represents 95% of our data. So write that down. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that as we get into uh, example four in this section. So you'll need that information later on, okay? Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the first example. The first example says, uh, the frequency table shows the number of raffle tickets sold by students in your grade. Display the data in a histogram. Describe the shape of the distribution. So a histogram is similar to a bar graph. Um, it's a way for us to display information that's in a frequency table. So what this frequency table says is it says the number of tickets sold. So one through eight tickets were sold five times, okay? 
So frequency tables give us kind of a general trend of the data, but it doesn't tell me um, the exact information, okay? So because we know groups of the information. So I'm going to put 1 through 8. That's my first category, so I'll put that down here. And then I'll continue 9 through 16, 17 through 24, 25 through 32, 33 through 40. I'm trying to write this small to fit everything. 41 through 48, and 49 through 50. And then my frequencies, my lowest frequency is 5, my highest frequency is 25. So I need to count, I'm, I'm actually going to count by 5s, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. That actually works out really well. And then I'm going to draw a bar for each of these um, frequencies. So 1 through 8 was 5. Um, 9 through 16 was 9, so that's just below 10. 17 through 24 is 16. I'm actually going to go back and make this a little more accurate here. Seventeen through twenty-four was sixteen, so I could go a little above seven, fifteen. Twenty-five through that was all the way up to twenty-five. Thirty-three through forty is at twenty, and then down to eight and seven. So there is my uh, histogram, and then the last part it says describe the shape of the distribution. So take a look at this. Am I seeing a longer tail to the left, a longer tail to the right, or basically even tails on both sides? I see the biggest um, bar in the middle. I see pretty even on both sides. So this looks symmetric to me. So to draw a histogram, you're putting the... Um, groups on the bottom and the frequencies on the side. All right, in example two, um, we're actually going to be asked to make a histogram as well, except for now we're not given a frequency table. We're just given the speeds. So we're going to have to make a frequency table with our intervals and our frequencies and then make it into a histogram. So let's take a look at the data we're given. It says a police officer measures the speeds in miles per hour of 30 motorists, the results are shown in the table below. It says display the data in a histogram using six intervals beginning with 31 to 35. So if I'm going to make a, a histogram, I need to first make that frequency table. My frequency table will have my speeds and then the frequency. So the intervals, they said to start with 31 through 35. Now be careful here. Think about how many speeds are in the interval 31 through 35. I'm actually going to count it out for you just so we can make sure we get this right. That includes the speed of 31 miles per hour, 32, 33, 34, and 35. So that's five speeds. The next interval needs to start with 36 and has to include five speeds. Our intervals have to be even. I can't go 31 to 35 and then 36 to 55. They have to be even. So if I'm going to go 31 to 35, I have to go 36 to 40. And then similarly, 41 to 45. And I'll keep going. A um, couple ways I'll know when to stop. For one, it says use six intervals. So I'll do this six times. Otherwise, I can scan my speeds and I just have to go up to the highest speed, which is 60. So once I get an interval that includes 60, I can stop. So 41 to 45. 46 to 50, 51 to 55, and then one more, 56 to 60. Now, I'm going to place each of these speeds in the correct interval. I'm going to go one at a time, and I'm just going to put a um, dash uh, or a tally mark in each of the speeds, wherever it falls. So 32 falls in my first interval. 53 falls in my second to last interval. And you can keep going. You can follow along as I do it, or you can pause and fast forward and do this on your own. Basically, I'm just placing each one. Take your time on this. You want to make sure you get it right. So 
So I'm just, again, looking at it, figuring out where it falls, crossing it off. Notice I'm actually crossing them off so that I don't get confused if you, you don't have to do that. But I think it helps me stay organized here. You can already kind of see a pattern forming where most of the speeds are falling. Make sure you're taking your time here and getting this right. Oops, see, I almost got that one wrong. All right, now that we have our frequency table, let's go ahead and put this into a histogram. So I'll put my intervals, uh, my speed intervals in the bottom. Bottom, so that's 31 to 35. 36 to 40, 41 to 45, 46 to 50, 51 to 55, and 56 to 60. So I have my six intervals on the bottom. Um, and then let's take a look at our frequencies. Uh, one, three, five, six, 11, and four. So I need to go up to 11. Um, I think I'm going to count by twos, maybe. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. That should be good. I'll label those. Uh, it probably wouldn't have been the end of the world to count by ones, but um, I was fine with counting by twos. Uh, and then I'll go ahead and graph this. 31 to 35 is one. 36 to 40 is three. And then we're up at five up to six, all the way up to 11, and then to four. Um, okay, so I'm gonna now ask some questions about this. So it's actually on the next page of my notes. Um, the questions I have about this is which measure of center and variation best represent the data? And then it says the speed limit is 45 miles per hour. How would you interpret these results? Um, so let's think about what's happening in this picture. Um, it was skewed to the left, right? It had a longer tail on the left. Um, so because it was skewed, anytime it's not symmetric, if it's skewed left or right, the mean is usually not going to be a very good representation. In this case, if it's skewed because it's skewed left, the median will be a better representation. If it's symmetric, the mean is usually your best bet. Um, and then it says the speed limit is 45 miles an hour. How would you interpret these results? Well, let's figure out where 45 falls on that scale. So in general, it went like this, okay? And 45 was right here, kind of right in the middle. 45 was right in the middle. Well, there's this data on below 45 and all of this data above 45. Most of the data is over here. So most of the people were going above 45. So I can interpret this by saying most people were speeding. Uh, okay, so example three, we're actually going to skip. The picture's not showing up. Um, it was just comparing two sets of data, but it's not really that important of example. Um, so let's take a look at example four. We are also going to compare two sets of data. Um, for some reason, my data, my picture's not showing up. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and write it down here. Um, so we're given a bunch of information. We're given the survey size, uh, minimum, the maximum, the first quartile, the median, the third quartile, the mean, and the standard deviation. So let's make a little table with this information. Uh, 
Uh, and then I'm going to put two columns in two columns in this table. Um, so this is the information we were given. Okay, uh, one column for men and one column for women. So I'll put. I'm going to draw one more line here. I'll put men here women here, and then I'm going to fill in all the data that they're giving us. So the survey size was 35 men, 40 women. The minimum number of pairs of shoes men has was two. The minimum for women was five. The maximum for men was 17. Max for women was 24. First quartile, five, and then 12. Median, seven, and 14. Third quartile, 10, and 17. Mean, eight, and 14. And standard deviation, three, and four. So I want to go ahead and draw a uh, box and whisker plot for each of those. Remember, uh, we used five pieces of information for the box and whisker plot. That's the minimum, the maximum, first quartile, median, and third quartile. So the ones I just circled are the ones I'm going to do. So first I'll do men. Uh, just so I can stay organized here, I'll label men I'll put here. And then the women I'll put here. So for men, Minimum is two. Four, first quartile is five. Median is seven. Third quartile is 10. And maximum is 17. I'll draw my box and my whiskers. And then I'll go ahead and draw my box and whisker plot for women. Um, minimum is five. First quartile, 12. Median, 14. Third quartile, 17. Maximum, 24. And I'll draw my box and whiskers on that. It says describe the shape of each distribution. Um, I would say the women have a symmetric distribution and the men, it looks to be a little bit of skewed right. The longer whiskers on the right. So I'm going to call this one skewed right. Now let's go ahead and answer the questions. It says compare the number of pairs of shoes owned by men to the number of pairs of shoe shoes owned by women. So basically, I just want to look at these two box whisker plots and compare them. What am I seeing? Is one more spread out than the other? Is one shifted more? Um, so I do notice that in general, the box, which contains most of the data, remember this contains 50% of the data, uh, is, is higher than the box for men. So um, most of the data, most of the women's data is higher. So I would say in general, women own more shoes. Um, there's also more variability. This is a bigger box and whisker plot. It goes all the way from 5 to 24, whereas this one only goes from, uh, what, 2 to uh, 17. So there's more variability. Um, so in general, women own more shoes. And there's more variability. And then it says, about how many of the women surveyed would you expect to own between 10 and 18 pairs of shoes? So let's take a look at where 10 and 18 fall. Between 10 and 18. So the mean is 14. 10 and 18, the standard deviation, this is going to be important, the standard deviation is 4. Think about if I add 4 from 10 and subtract 4. If I subtract 4, I'll get 10. If I add 4, I'll get 18. That's where that 10 and 18 comes from. It's one standard deviation below the mean and one standard deviation above the mean. Back when we were doing uh, the very first part of this notes, I told you that in a bell-shaped curve, 68% of the data is between one standard deviation of the mean. So 68% of the data uh, is that 10 to 18. So I want to know 68% of the women surveyed. That's 68% of 40. To figure out that number, we'll do a little math. We'll multiply 0.68 times 40 to get a total of 27 women. 
The biggest thing on this one is that you guys are able to draw your histograms, make your frequency tables and draw your histograms. So make sure you know how to do that. If you have any questions, email me or go back and watch the video again. Um, let me know if you have any questions on it.